In this video, I'm going to tell you how to upgrade your 4AG ZE throttle body into either 4AGE, naturally aspirated version, or the 3S GTE found in the MR2 Turbo. We'll also talk a little bit about how to calibrate your throttle position sensor and a little bit of information about the idle air control valve. All right, let's get into it. So first off, you're going to have to take off the old throttle body and the J-pipe. Do so, you need to take off the four bolts at the back of the J pipe. And once you've taken those off, uh, you'll find that the whole J pipe is a little bit loose, but you won't be able to take it off completely because there'll be two hose clamps keeping it on. One of these is on the ABV, which is the smaller one. And then there will be the large outlet hole of the J pipe that will also be clamped to the engine itself. Obviously, in addition to this, you're going to have to take off the multiple vacuum lines and coolant lines that go to the throttle body. So I've attached this image here to hopefully help you with that. Depending on what additional features you have on your 4AG ZE, you may have, for example, power steering vacuum lines coming off the idle air control valve at the positions shown here. With the J-pipe off, it's worth checking the supercharger oil level as it's quite difficult to access the filler hole and the level gauge with the J-pipe on, so worth checking this whilst it's off. So with the throttle body off the J-pipe, having a look at it, you can see the larger opening on the inlet side, the air filter size, and it actually narrows uh, through the throttle body. And I'm not sure why they did this with the 4AG ZE, but this is the whole purpose of why we're trying to upgrade it. The 4AG ZE is actually the smallest throttle body in terms of uh, diameter, measuring just shy of 50 millimeters, whereas the naturally aspirated throttle body found on the A86, for example, is actually 55 millimeters. Comparing the two throttle bodies, you can see that the 4AG ZE actually narrows and forms a restriction at the actual butterfly valve whereas the naturally aspirated version doesn't. Now, it's all well and good putting on a larger throttle body, but it's no good unless you widen the J-pipe itself. If you actually feel on the inside of the J-pipe, there's actually a sort of a uh, restriction there. But it's only for the first inch or two of the J-pipe, then it actually opens up to about 55 millimeters all the way through. So you only need to machine out the first inch or so. Now, how you widen the J-pipe is up to you. I just wrapped a bit of electrical tape around a bottle and wrapped it in some sandpaper and literally increased the number of wraps of tape there were as I went along. Um, wrapped the sandpaper around it and just literally twisted it. Uh, quite an easy method, to be honest. Just quite time-consuming. But uh, if you've got the spare time, and it's quite therapeutic to do so, and you can keep checking and you get a nice smooth result on the inside and here's me struggling to sand the pipe right go on we've all practiced doing that motion haven't we boys come on you should be pretty uh, familiar with this kind of motion if you know what i mean so you should be good at this shouldn't take you too long at all and there's the end result a bit of swarf and sandpaper coming out Keep repeating this and measuring until you get the right diameter that you need. So you're looking for 55 millimeters. So once you're happy, you should have 55 millimeters all the way around the initial part of the J pipe. Oh, near as damn it. Uh, you can also marry up the throttle body repeatedly, tighten it all up, and just make sure there's no lips or anywhere that air could get caught and cause a slight restriction. So in this example, you can see I've still got a little bit more to go. You can see a lip where it actually was restricted. So a little bit more sanding for me in this case. And here's the end result. See, there's no lip and I also gave everything a nice clean. So it's looking all nice and shiny in there. So this is what you should have by the end of it once you've enlarged the J-pipe sufficiently. On the 4AG ZE, there's an electronic idle air control valve which, as the name suggests, controls the idle of the engine. When the engine is cold, the idle air control valve is open. The operation of it is shown here. 
And what this effectively does, it bypasses air around the throttle plate via this hole on the inlet side, the filter side, through the idle air control valve, which is now open, and then it exits through the throttle body. There's actually a channel which has been machined out of the throttle body on the 4AG ZE, and this provides the air path which actually bypasses the butterfly valve. So you can provide air to the engine even though the valve is closed. Ultimately, this makes the engine idle higher because it's got more air flowing into it. When the engine gets warm, the idle air control valve closes, as shown here, and this causes less air to flow around the throttle plate and therefore reduces your idle. Now, I'm not totally sure if it's meant to be fully closed or just partially closed. But I found I had problems with my 4AG ZEs and when the engine got warm, it would stall. So I have a suspicion that this valve was closing too much and therefore starving the engine of air when the valve was shut. There's actually an adjustment screw which you can loosen and you can actually twist the head of the idle air control valve to adjust this. On the naturally aspirated 4AG E, you've got an auxiliary air valve instead. Uh, it operates in the same principle as the electronic idle control valve, except it uses a wax pellet rather than a, a valve or you know a stepper motor that closes. The wax pellet actually expands and provides that restriction in airflow. All 4AG uh, series engines have the idle speed adjustment screw. This provides uh, an alternative path for air to flow usually used for trimming or fine-tuning the idle uh, when the engine is warm. So that provides an alternative path for air to flow around the throttle plate. As demonstrated on the 4HE ZE throttle body there, that's the green arrow. That's a smaller air path in which uh, air can flow. In my case, the auxiliary air valve was faulty. The wax pellet had completely melted out. So I decided to delete it altogether using a blank plate from RA Motorsports. This isn't ideal because it just causes uh, issues with cold starts. You may need to use the accelerator pedal manually to warm the engine up. Um, I also have to make my own gasket, but if you've got an auxiliary air valve that works, make sure you use it. If you put on the new throttle body on the J-pipe, you're gonna notice that you can't fully open the throttle properly because of the stop screw actually impinges onto the J-pipe there. Um, so what you have to do, you have to take off the throttle lever, that sort of half moon shaped thing. You need to take the one off the 4AG ZE, which is slightly smaller. Uh, and this will ensure that all your throttle cable lines up properly when you take it off. I'm just demonstrating that here, the state of my hands, jeez. Uh, so it's just a nut on the top of the throttle lever. Um, they may need a little bit of persuasion to get off. One of my four G, 4A GZE, sorry, was quite stuck on there. I had to lever it off with a screwdriver just to loosen it a bit. Um, but it's like Lego this bit. It's, it's really easy. You just take one throttle lever from the, the supercharged version, put it onto the naturally aspirated version as shown, and then you just put the nut back on. If you don't do this, then your throttle cable is not going to line up with your throttle body properly. Also, if you need to keep your original throttle position sensor, if you don't have a new one, you need to also take off these little spiral-shaped thingamajiggies and swap them across as well. Whenever you mess around with the throttle body, you're going to have to recalibrate the throttle position sensor, uh, which is not too difficult, but you do need uh, some tools for it, particularly feeler gauges. You're going to need some feeler gauges or thickness gauges that are well below one millimeter thick. In the case of the 4AG ZE, you need a 0.45 millimeter and a 0.65 millimeter feeler gauge. So to show you where you stick the feeler gauge, you need to wedge it in between the rotating pinwheel mechanism and the stop screw there. Also, it's really handy to make yourself some test cables that you can easily slide onto the throttle position sensor to make it easier to measure the idle switch. So usually your multimeter will have a resistance mode and a continuity check mode where it usually makes an audible beep when the circuit is made. In the case of the 4AG ZE, you want the circuit to be made, you want continuity when you've got a 0.45mm thickness gauge 
insert between the throttle lever and the stop screw. And conversely, when you have a 0.65 millimeter thickness gauge, you want the circuit to not be made, you want no continuity. Now, I'll show you a video demonstrating this uh, principle with the multimeter. So you can see here, I've got 12 ohms, that means I've got continuity between the idle and the E2 pin. When I open that stop lever, you can see that the sound disappears. So according to the book, what you're meant to do, you're actually meant to insert for the 480ZE a 0.7 millimeter thickness gauge, and then you rotate the throttle position sensor until you just about lose continuity. You find the point again, keep twisting it until you find the exact point it is lost. And then you tighten the throttle position sensor into place. And then you need to check it with the 0.45 and 0.65 millimeters. So here's me checking it with the 0.45. There should still be continuity when I have the thickness gauge in there, which there is. So now I'm gonna test it with the 0.65 and there should be no continuity. If this isn't the case for you, then you need to go back and readjust as shown earlier. Also, um, if your throttle position sensor is set kind of too tight, if the, you know, you're too close to the limit, you'll find you'll have really jerky throttle and the car will lurch back and forth at really light throttles. So if this is the case for you, you may need to just readjust your throttle position sensor again. You only need to carry out this next step if you've got an oversized crank pulley and you wish you'd delete the ABV rather than doing the ABV mod. Uh, so I'm just making a blank plate for it. I've marked the hole with blue engineer's dye, printed on a sheet of metal. Honestly, I'm shit when it comes to craftsmanship. Please excuse the terrible template. Uh, and I make a really ugly looking blank for the side. Uh, I just prefer to have the ABV out of the way. It makes it easier to check your supercharger oil and stuff. And don't think you really need it. But ideally you do, uh, but if you want to get a Cusco adjustable one, they're quite expensive and they're pretty rare and hard to find. Uh, obviously you're going to leave a 25mm hole exposed, so you're going to need a blanking plug to clamp onto there as well. If you've made it this far, you'll realise that that 90 degree inlet elbow pipe will not fit anymore. Also, you'll have to take into account any vacuum ports that you've lost, so you need to create a new bit of inlet pipe work. Um, the most important vacuum port you need on there is for the positive crankcase ventilation which is the largest port. I believe it's about 10 millimeters and it's just a short bit of hose that runs from the top of your valve cover to your uh, inlet pipe. Also you may, depending on the state of your 4AGZE, uh, you may have the air control valve in situ or not. I believe this has got something to do with equalizing pressure across the, the seals of the supercharger or the bearings of the supercharger, something like that. Anyway, I don't really know because mine didn't have it when I bought it. Um, so that is plugged for me. But looking at the supercharger, I believe you can just have a bit of pipe work that bridges from each bearing from each side of it. You may have something like that. I don't know, if I'm honest. And lastly, if you've got aircon or not, you'll have the uh, aircon vacuum port, which uh, runs along to an, uh, an adjustable screw, which adjusts how much idle up you get when you put the aircon on. It's easy enough to buy all the silicon pipe work and the vacuum ports. I got all mine from Viper Hoses here in the UK, who provided everything I need. I'll put links in the description. So I'm just demonstrating here the, the PCV uh, connection. So I just have to drill a hole into the silicon pipe. Um, I drill a 10 millimeter hole and then you actually just place this fit in and then tighten it up and it performs a seal and then gives you a vacuum port on your silicon pipe work. Like I say, 10 millimeters is all you need. Obviously you may need to repeat this process for whatever other vacuum ports you require. Um, not particularly hard to do but there you go. Now alternatively you can go down the route of installing a 3SGTE throttle body uh, which requires similar modifications obviously you still need to do the J-pipe again and also uh, move the, the throttle levers across etc recalibrate the position sensor. Uh, you do get the advantage of being able to use the electronic idle control valve 
that's already attached onto there, which has got the identical plug to the 4AGZE. But if you look at the photo here, you'll notice that the channel for the idle air isn't fully machined out to bypass the, the throttle plate in this case. So you actually need to machine a little bit away to sort of mimic what was on the 4AGZE. Uh, not too difficult, but again, just a little bit of time required with a file or a Dremel or something of sorts. But I'll show you what I did. So here you can see that I've machined a little bit of the material away to perform a path for air to flow. But in addition to this, because the idle air path is different on the 3S GTE, it actually goes in by that large hose connection there. You need to add an additional fitting onto your silicon pipework to accommodate for this. Sadly, your uh, 90 degree elbow inlet pipe work is still not going to fit on the 3S GTE. So you can buy this little connection from ATS Racing, which allows you to then put a silicon hose on the top of it. And that goes onto the top of it there. Here's a little run through of the final setup. So I've got the idle air and the positive crankcase ventilation hoses on the inlet side there. I've got the charcoal canister connection there. And then just going around the back, I'll show you the idle air to the valve and the coolant. So when the car was cold, I was getting about 2000 RPM, which is pretty high. And when it was warm, about 1700 RPM. Throttle body upgrade, is it worth it? In my case, no, it really wasn't. I guess you potentially gain some horsepower, perhaps up to five horsepower if you do all this. It's a lot of effort to gain not much horsepower. And to be honest, on a stock ECU, it's just never going to run right. I mean, mine ran like shit, even on the uh, the original throttle body. Always had idling issues. I've cleaned the electronic idle control valve many times. I've tried all sorts to replace the ECU. I've changed water temperature sensors, all sorts. And it's just never ran right. And to be honest, changing and modifying all the inlet tracks, it's just going to throw everything out of kilter, you know, it's old technology, um, you're better off, if you're gonna do this, either perhaps the earlier generation of 4 ZEs, which had the airflow meter. I think they're, they're less fussy when it, when it comes to idling on the, on the old, you know, 80s computer. Um, you're better off just getting an aftermarket ECU if you're gonna do this, which, you know, sadly is the truth. When you're doing any modification to the 4 ZE, I'm sure you can, do uh, many modifications on the stock ECU, but to be honest, you're not going to take full advantage of them unless you get a aftermarket ECU. Even after this throttle body upgrade, I always get problems um, idling. I think I have an issue where when the engine gets warm, the idle control valve closes and it just starves the engine of air and then it just stalls. The only way I can get around it is either by unplugging the uh, idle control valve so it's doing nothing. You usually have a really high idle regardless whether it's hot or cold and then it will just overheat if it's standing still in traffic. The only other way is to increase the idle speed adjustment screw all the way up so when the valve closes there's still an alternative path for air to flow. But again, that's you shouldn't have the idle adjustment screw all the way open. It's not what it's there for. It's just to fine tune the idle. So really I'm just masking one problem with another. So yeah, if you're gonna do this, make sure you've got you know, an aftermarket ECU is what I would say. Um, so that's the conclusion really. I'm sorry, not a particularly interesting video and I hope it was of some use to you guys if you ever do consider doing a, a throttle body upgrade. But to be honest, if you've got a nice running uh, stock 4AGZE and it runs well, leave it that way because there's so much conflicting information out there about 4AGZEs. Compared to the 4AGEs, there's a lot more support and guidance and help for them. If yours runs well as it is, just leave it, please. It's not worth it. But I'll provide any information for you guys just in case you do want to do it yourself and totally ruin your fucking 4AGZE. So there you go. Oh, catch you later.